I'll tell you what, let's start, let's, let's look at verse, let, let's look at uh, chapter 15 tonight, and we'll look at 16 later as I'm look, looking at this and just thinking through this. Let's go to uh, chapter 15, and we'll start reading in verse 51. He says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So verse 58 is one of my favorites. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And so there's a lot of truth packed in that verse. But before we get to that verse, he gives us some, uh, some supporting truths that make that verse possible. He says, therefore, in the beginning of verse 58. But if you go back to a, really the whole chapter of 15, he begins with the gospel in the first part of chapter 15. But he gives all these reasonings for the truth of the resurrection and for what the resurrection accomplished and what the resurrection, not just that it happened, not just the ins and outs about it, but what it means for us. And the resurrection means for each one of us that, as verse 53 says, this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. So because of the fact that the resurrection is real, because of the fact that it was effective, and because of the fact that that applies to you and I who have trusted in Jesus Christ, therefore, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So we went out and uh, we, read, we worked on that roof. And uh, I told the guys, I, don't, I told a couple people this, but the second day of our working, that morning I read Ecclesiastes 1, 2, and 3. And in Ecclesiastes 1, 2, and 3, and really the whole book of Ecclesiastes, he talks about the vanity of all kinds of things, the emptiness of all th kind of things, those things which are vain. And one of those things is work. One of those things is accomplishing things in this life. It's vain when we're just doing things. And we can think about the people who are the most successful and most powerful in our state. We can think of the people who are most successful and most powerful in our nation. And we can make that even across the world. And we can find the people who have the most money. And what happens to their money when they die? It goes to their descendants. It gets dispersed. It goes to different charities. It just goes away from them. No longer can they enjoy it. No longer does anything that they have, uh, no longer can they say anything or dictate any uh, direction of any funds or of any equipment or of any manpower or of any systems or um, uh, machinery of, of economics. None of those things doesn't matter anymore. All of a sudden, their voice is gone and dead. So really, for them, it's vain. So they can enjoy it while they live in this earth if they uh, choose to do so. But once they're gone, it's vain. And you read those passages and you find out, apart from the Lord's working and apart from him doing something, our work is vain and it's empty. So we can do a lot of work in this life and we can even do a lot of Christian work, a lot of religious work, a lot of quote unquote spiritual work in our lives. But if it's in our own strength and if it's for our own purposes and if it's not uh, under the Lord's guidance, then it's vain. And uh, you can find people who built really big churches. You can find people who had uh, a lot of big facilities. You can find people who have a, a big name. Like Joel Osteen's got a big name. A lot of people follow him. But you know, his ministry is vain. It's empty. There's nothing really there that's lasting. There's nothing that's going to stay. What stays is that which the Lord does. And that's what he says uh, in verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So it doesn't end for us. Our spiritual labor doesn't end for us. Uh, the results of that don't end for us at our death. Because at our death, we're just beginning eternity at our death or at the rapture. So when these things pass off, we don't pass off. We continue on. And now we can enjoy those spiritual labors, the fruits of those spiritual labors, because of the resurrection, because of what Jesus did. 
That's why he says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Our labor that's in the Lord, our hard work, labor there is the idea of something that's strenuous, something that can be sometimes difficult, is not in vain in the Lord. He, look what he says in, in uh, verse 30, 50, 53. This corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So two things happen to me in this life. One, I'm going to get old if the Lord tarries, and I'm going to decay. Two, I'm going to die, right? Corruptibility and mortality. These are the things that define me. By the way, they don't always come one before the other. Uh, I mean, incorrupt, uh, corruptible, corruptibility before mortality. Sometimes people die when they're young, and then the corruption happens afterwards. Sometimes we corrupt while we're still living, right? This is, this is uh, the truth of our physical bodies and of our existence here. It passes off the scene. It goes away. But this corruptible must put on incorruption, that which doesn't decay, and that which is, by the way, pure, be, and that's the difference between something that decays or is corruptible and something that is incorruptible. Uh, the word of God, for instance, is incorruptible, according to Peter. So that's going to last. That's going to stay. This corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And when that happens, when this corruptible, and he's really referring to himself, and we could refer this to each of ourselves. We could point at ourselves and touch ourselves in the chest, slap our arms and say, this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. This mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass that is, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And that's Isaiah 25 that he's quoting there. If you go back there. Verse 7, he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory. And now we have the connection to Revelations. The Lord God will wipe away all tears, or wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. So this is something that the Lord has settled. This is something the Lord has prophesied himself. He will swallow up death and victory. He gave us a foretaste of that by the resurrection of Christ. He's the first fruits of them that slept. He's the, he's the first one who was resurrected. He's the captain of our salvation. We're going to follow after. And that's what he says. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. So right now, death is starting to be swallowed up, but it's not yet. One day, death is going to be completely swallowed up. And the, the mortality that we deal with in this life is no longer going to be around. Death is going to be swallowed up in victory. Victory. There won't be any more loss. There won't be any more mistakes. There won't be any more failings. We'll be in victorious. There won't be any more uh, submission and bowing down obeisance to death. Death will be swallowed up in victory. It'll be completely overtaken. It won't exist anymore, and it will be uh, surpassed in the victory. So as ominous as death is to us right now as human beings, the victory that will follow for those who have trusted in Jesus Christ is so much more surpassing those things that it will swallow up death as if it were a bite. Uh, that's the way that the victory is. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. That which brings us into death is sin, and that which makes sin sin is the law. The authority of it is the law. We're underneath the law, and we're subject to sin. We are sinful human beings. We're under the law. We break the law. We violate the law. We sin. Sin is what brought death into the world, according to Romans chapter 5. This is what holds us down. This is what subdues us, sin and the law that we cannot keep perfectly, but Jesus did. We are in Christ. We've trusted in Christ Jesus. So when we die, the sting of death and the victory of the grave are taken away. They're removed from us. The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. So what's the answer? Is there any hope for us? Yes. Verse 57, thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have that victory presently 
but we're still in these mortal bodies, but we'll receive that future victory. We are in that victory. Because of that, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So it doesn't matter if my work for the Lord yields what I can tell is great results. Doesn't matter. What matters is I'm going to serve the Lord because I'm doing God's work in God's way, in God's will, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So my labor for the Lord, that strenuous work that I do for the Lord, if I do it in the Lord, is the work of the Lord. So you know whose work it's not? Mine. It's not my work any longer. That's why it's not vain. My work is vain. My work is empty. My work is not lasting. But God's work is eternal. It's everlasting. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, because it's the Lord's labor, it's the Lord's work. And so, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So we ought to be overflowing, abounding in God's work. We ought to be steadfast and unmovable. And sometimes the world wants to, us to be shaken. It doesn't want us to have our face set like a flint. It doesn't want us to be unmovable. It wants us to be shifting. We're not going to shift because we have firm grounds to stand on, the firm grounds of victory. And we have the promise of God that our labor is not in vain in him. So can somebody else do something different and maybe get some results? Sure. Fine. Let them do it. Maybe they'll get some results. But I'm going to labor in the work of the Lord. My labor is not in vain in the Lord. So I can't, we can't be worried about who says this and who says this and somebody else makes, makes this statement and somebody else uh, uh, has progressed to a different, uh, different place. That's fine. My labor is still not in vain in the Lord. Is my labor in vain in the Lord? Then forget it. If my labor is vain in the Lord, then why did we come out to church on Wednesday night when it's pouring cats and dogs? We wouldn't do it. No, our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. In the Lord. Uh, is it a Saturday when we go out? Is our labor in vain? Then why go out? Why would we do that? We wouldn't do it. It's vain. It's empty. We'll go do something we, we might enjoy better. Go relax. No, our labor is not in vain in the Lord. In other words, it's fruitful. It's purposeful. It's going to yield good results because it's the Lord's work. So let's do the Lord's work in the Lord's way. And when we do that, we're going to not only understand the victory that we have in Christ Jesus, but we're going to understand that our labor is not in vain. Our labor is not in vain. So, what is vain? vain? Vanity is emptiness. Vanity is worthlessness. Vanity is ineffectiveness. We don't want to be partaking in those things. We want to be partaking in the work of the Lord, doing God's work, God's way, and abounding in it. And so, we have choices in our lives, things that we can do. We can be not steadfast. We can be movable. We cannot be abounding in the work of the Lord. In other words, we can be a little bit spiritually apathetic or lazy. That's vain. Doing God's work in our own strength is vain. Doing God's work for our own glory is vain. But if we do God's work in the Lord, then it is not in vain. Not in vain. And that's the way we need to focus on. I heard a song a long time ago called It's Not in Vain, talking about laboring in the vineyards of the Lord. And we labor and labor and labor, and sometimes we don't see what we want to in the time that we want to. Sometimes we go our whole lives and we're full of disappointment, full of frustration, full of hurts and wounds. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years of these things sometimes in certain people's lives. When they get to the end, they wonder, well, is it all worth it? Is it worth it to stay unmovable? Is it worth it to stay steadfast? Is it worth it to be abounding in the work of the Lord? Yes, it's worth it. It's not in vain in the Lord. So be strengthened and be encouraged that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's the truth. I didn't say that. God said that. And if God said that, then it's so. So bank on it. Count on it. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for its encouragement to us. I pray you'd help us as we look at these decisions to make as a church body. I pray you'd give us your wisdom and your guidance as we go into this time. We pray for those who are not able to be here tonight because of sickness and different troubles that have befallen them. We just pray your grace and your comfort for them. 
And we pray for them, each one, to trust in you uh, to the fullest and help them to learn the lessons of faith in you and the lessons of correction and the lessons of dependence and the lessons of uh, endurance and patience that you want them to. So we thank you for working these things in our lives. We thank you for the rain. We know that it, it is uh, needed to replenish the earth. So we look to it as a blessing from you. And we know that you created it. So we thank you for it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.